Hey, this is Brian Sebastian. You're watching Movie Reviews for More on the Women's Broadcast TV channel. And today's going to be an exciting show. I'm very, very happy that everybody is here. I want to thank my co-host, Soriana Kitt. I want to thank Misty. Tripoli. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Introduce <laughs> uh, yourself. My name's Kara Moncrief. I'm the clinical director for Viora, and we manufacture lasers, radio frequency, and cosmetic devices. Now, you had a chance to take this. You went for the treatment. Yeah, you I did really take the treatment. Yeah. Yes. What I loved about it was that, I mean, first of all, it took minutes. Like, it was just something you can do on your lunch break. You come in, and in 15 minutes, it's done. And there's zero downtime. In fact, I was like, did they do something to my face? Because <laughs> there's no redness, nothing. And then you reap the benefits as you go on. So, what did you have done? Um, the um, the fit. The face thing. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the, what's the term? Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, exactly. So the face thingy. We do uh, radio frequency, laser, and intense pulse light on, on the I face. think I did radio frequency. Oh, okay. Yes. So lifting, that's collagen yes. and tight. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad you liked I it. I liked it. Yeah. I liked it a lot. No downtime, no pain either. No, and everyone was so nice. Yes. Oh, yeah. good. Yeah, it was a great experience. There's no negative aspects about it whatsoever. Oh, yeah, wonderful. so thank you. Yeah, Misty's yeah, saying, where's mine? I see a smile on her face. like, wait a minute, what is all this about? <laughs> I'm just going to do, I'm going to do all the world here. I <laughs> didn't know any of this stuff existed. Talk about how you got into this, because the last time we saw you, you, you uh, it sticks in my mind, you love watching the movies. Mm -hmm. You were on the road for 250 days at one point. At one point, said, yes. And I've never gotten that out of my <laughs> Me either. Where are you in this case right now since it's a new year? Uh, so where am I at now? Mm -hmm. Still traveling. Um, still doing. So what I do is clinical mm -hmm. training. So when a doctor purchases the device, I fly in and I train the accounts on how to use it properly and so yeah I just got back from Dallas and Houston and now here with you and are you always the guinea pig like oh you can use my I wish no <laughs> <laughs> it's always their staff of course they're dying for for training so yeah they can start getting treatments done but no yeah I have a device at home though so what yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god did you see her face? I mean, wow. what's this device? And, it was like, and there's not a wrinkle on her face. Yeah. <laughs> I'm tripping. It's perfect. Well, it's, I mean, we remove, and, and I've done a lot, a lot to myself, but we remove sunspots and um, target collagen and elastin, so for lifting, um, target the water in the skin, so overall skin rejuvenation, so it helps shrink pores. Um, that also helps with fine lines and wrinkles. And then we do body as well, so we do contouring and cellulite. Um, over 86% of women have cellulite, doesn't matter how thin or fit they are. Because we're supposed just, to. Because we're supposed to. Uh, <laughs> but we can help with that uh, if, if that is a problem area. Uh, varicose veins. Um, Those will never go away, varicose veins. There's always a new one somewhere. Yeah. They'll, they'll, <laughs> they'll, 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 they'll <laughs> Me and me wearing any mini skirts. I'm just the just the one will pop specifically for a mini skirt. <laughs> but here's the thing: men are conscious of those things too. Absolutely. I mean, on women or on themselves? No, on themselves. Okay. <laughs> more and more. Yeah. No, I accept women as they are. This is what it's all about, right? No, yes. I, I think that's really, really important. You have varicose uh, veins and cellulite problems? No, no, not yet. <laughs> I hope I don't get it, but... You will never get that. Well, we, we're, <laughs> I'm, I'm speaking for us white men and us black men, I hope. <laughs> uh, they get them, so what do they do about that? Because you said a lot of men, uh, this is for men too, right? It is, and, and that industry is growing tremendously. So I think more so for the males, what we're seeing is contouring. Um, hair removal, so you know, back hair removal, or even when they get ingrown hairs on the neck, mm -hmm. so hair removal here, but also getting into the face stuff, so you know, removing um, brown spots, removing vascular that they have um, a lot of times on their face and their nose, but also collagen. So, with radio frequency, what you had mm -hmm. done, uh, men are, and I, I hate to say this because you're sitting right next to me, but they can be babies when it comes to this kind of stuff, you know, when they get sick. I'm gonna do my um, best not to be. A baby. So, <laughs> So with them it's great because there is no pain with it 
and there is no yeah. downtime. So yeah. you know, a lot of men wouldn't want to admit that they're having something done, and no one would ever know because it's just a little bit of redness that's gone. Within well, I've got bags of so, these my eyes. I want to get rid of this. Exactly. So it, it treats that as well. So when do you use it without going under the knife too? So we're yes. going to will help with like craziness. And what about and younger else? kids, like teenagers with acne? Is that, that, that do is you have to wait a certain age before they can be exposed to those treatments? Mm -hmm. or? Not necessarily, and I think that's more so up to the, the operating physician mm -hmm. and getting a consent from the parent and how young they do want to treat. Um, but we use blue light in specific to, oh, yeah. to treat acne, and um, it just targets the, the acne bacteria. So again, there's no downtime with it, so yeah. kids can go to school, you know, it's not, it's not something that they're going to have downtime from, so yeah. Yeah. And there's salons here in California, Los Angeles. That we yes. do. We have doctors here that, that absolutely have it. So it's yeah. physicians. She went into yeah. it's physicians. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it's actually yeah. administered only by a physician. Yes. Not by estheticians. Well, or, and it depends on the state. Yeah. yeah. So some states they are using estheticians, some nurses. Um, Just like one of the doctors Botox like to do it as well sometimes. Yep. Like you know, Botox can be done by a plastic surgeon or a doctor or a RN. Or, yeah, or a nurse a lot of times. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they you're like, they pair well. I have, I'm, I'm just, I, this is a, I don't even know anything about it. This is a whole new world. Yes. <laughs> well, the funny thing about you is I, I know most of your world, but it's interesting where you came from. And again, coming in, what, the last couple of days, you came from Mexico, right? Yeah. Talk what were you doing in Mexico? I lived there. And in Costa Rica, apparently, for three months yeah. out of the year. Well, I'm kind of like, what I've done is I've learned to chase the best weather. And so I now, uh, yeah. my home home is in Mexico, and now I'm creating homes all around the world where wow. I want to live, and I'll live there. Where in Mexico? Playa del Carmen. Nice. It is quite nice. Yes. It's it super nice. heaven. Yeah, so well, this isn't even like a conversation I have when I'm there, so it's really interesting. Do you speak Spanish? Enough to get by. Yeah. Suficiente. <laughs> <laughs> so Costa Rica and, and Mexico, you, you, can, you can pass by? Oh, yeah, I can get by. I can't have an intellectual conversation, yeah. you know, and really express my deepest emotions, but I can, I can, I can operate my life. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> so what happens when the guys come up to you and want to seduce you or whatever? <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it on. Because <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, love, you don't really need, you know, intellectual conversations. Well, you do <laughs> if you want it to grow. <laughs> but not um, the But not the beginning. Yeah. But it's it's really interesting because where I live, you don't really even need to speak Spanish. Oh, you don't like, even need to speak Spanish. You really <laughs> don't. You just walk around. Um, <laughs> but because most of the people there speak English, because even the locals speak English because yeah. of the tourism population. Yeah. So so I most everyone I meet actually speaks English. So it's kind of yeah. nice for me. But I'm lazy, so I don't get to learn that much. So. You are not lazy. Talk about where you came from. <laughs> you are not lazy. Well, no, I'm not lazy. I mean, I lived here in Los Angeles for 15 years, and I was in the fitness world and um, really knee deep into the fitness. What thing. did you do? I um, was the director of a chain of health clubs here, uh, from all the way down to San Diego. There's like five or six clubs. I managed about 500 instructors. I developed programs. I was training NBA and NFL players. I was training elite fitness athletes and stuff like that. And I was also an instructor. I taught 20 classes a week. I was a Nike elite athlete and stuff like that. So I was in it, in it. And then, like I said, seven, seven and a half years ago, I was like, I can't do this anymore. Is it like burnout? Because I would think like, wow, like here must be super healthy and super fit that you don't even want to get out of that world. I love that you said that. And that's the illusion of all of it, is that the fitness industry is the most unhealthy industry you can imagine. How's that? Because it psychologically messes with you. And In what way? Um, you're never good enough. Your body's never okay. What they do to promote, no pain, no gain. They want you to pummel your body to death. It's not about loving yourself and being well from the inside and learning to find a peaceful, loving inner world that actually creates a, a healthy outer world. Mm -hmm. It's all aesthetics. It's all about what you look like, and that's all that matters. And when you're in it and you see it, it is really detrimental, to, especially to the soul of a woman. You're never good enough. Your body's never going to be good enough. It's so you look at it, you're like, oh, the fitness, you must be so fit. Yeah. Well, these people are messed in the head, and I was too, and I was in it, and I was perpetuating it. And it's all what you look like. There's no wellness. There's no real health. It's let's see what we can do to make that body look the way you want it to look. And it has nothing to and do with it. And that doesn't mean you work on mental. Which is no, you don't work on mental, spiritual, emotional, all of the things that actually encompass you as a whole human being. Mm -hmm. It's just what does your body look like? 
because that's your value on this planet. And that's what the fitness world perpetuates, and that's why I'm like, I'm out. I want to create something that actually perpetuates inner wellness and inner peace so that the outer shell is a reflection of the inner shell or the inner world. And to also realize that, you know, we're in a meat suit that has an expiration date. Yeah. And that's just reality. That's the truth of it. And we are so at war with our own aging process, which is where you guys come in and do this. And I understand it. And, you know, like I even look at my own face sometimes and be like, wow, I can really see the wrinkles and I really have to face that and go, that those years of youth and beauty are over and now it's time that I've got to accept this next phase of my life and I can counterbalance it and do things that help, you know? Right, and I think that's why we blew up in the industry too, is that do people really want to go under the knife and completely no. change the exactly. way they look? Yeah, so small things that you're doing in a package, like there's no downtime, so it's, it's gradual and it's a gradual collagen building but it's working with your own skin, your own natural skin. So it's not a cut and slice and dice and completely change who you are, right? Or chemicals, it's, it's none of that. And it's just keeping your own beauty, but just having that healthier skin yeah. and confidence back if, if a teenage kid has acne, something like that. Yeah, yeah. help them out yeah. with that, absolutely. Yeah. So there's, I believe that it's your wheat suit, you can do whatever you want with it. You own it, it's the only thing you can actually do whatever you want with it. You know, like whatever it is that you want to do with it. But it really, like, beauty really, and we say it all the time and we hear it, but beauty really is an essence. And it's someone that embodies who they are and is okay with who they are. And So what did you do? Like, where do you go from that world then? You well, have to do a total 180, right? I, I did. I did a, no, it was a, it was a very massive transformation in my life. I was living here. I was bulimic. I was bulimic for 16 years, almost killed myself. And I was a fitness professional at the same time, teaching 20 classes, I was a Nike lead athlete, all of these things, but I was killing myself on a daily basis. I was obsessed with food and calories and how I was gonna get rid of it and what I was looking like. And, and then quite literally, one day, I had a very spiritual, powerful, complete 180 in, in literally in one day. And I didn't know who I was. I couldn't leave my house for two weeks. I had realized I'd been lied to since the moment I was born. I realized I believed everything I'd been taught and I bought into the bullshit like everybody else does and I was just trying to be pretty like everybody else. And, and especially in LA. And, <laughs> oh, I was in the mecca of yeah. you know, it's You're in the just the, yeah. the, the pit of it, the, yeah. the garbage dump of it, all of it. And, yeah. and never felt good enough. And in one day I realized I was not born to hate myself. I was not born to not love this body. I wasn't born to obsess about calories. And I was wasting my life trying to be pretty. And um, that I needed to step into my true power. And that's, everything changed. I quit my job, I was like, I can't even, I can't even look at this industry anymore. Like it has destroyed my inner world and started to meditate and literally I would sit in meditation for four and five hours a day and I couldn't move and truth just would pour over me. Like, and I was told what I needed to do in the world and this is what I do now. I, I created a concept called the Groove Method and I teach people how to tune into their bodies through dance and movement. Wow. Help them accept and love the body that they're yeah. in and not just love it, but feel delicious in it. Yeah. Like feel good in it. So it still encompasses fitness, but in a way where you're you're living and feeling you're loving the skin you're in. Kind totally. Of thing. It's about an authenticity. It's about yeah. be your authentic self. Move your body in a way that feels good. Who cares what it looks like? Nobody cares what it looks like. And once you realize that, that no one actually is looking at you and then when you're like really nobody cares at all. Because they're too busy caring about the Exactly. Themselves. How many followers? <laughs> what have I got? Yeah. And yeah. really, nobody cares. No one's looking, but we lose so much of our precious life. Like nobody yeah. cares. I nobody mean, cares. Yeah. Exactly. But yeah. we are so obsessed with what other people think that we literally contort and twist and, and, and put chemicals and we just do the craziest things to ourselves because we really do think that someone actually cares. And then we die. <laughs> <laughs> You've also been traveling all over. And what's it all about, really? <laughs> no, I do. I, I've actually I've taught this all around the world. I've got my I've got facilitators that teach my concept in over twenty countries. Wow. And I've looped the globe 10, 15 times teaching You're this. You're like the subway franchise of uh, wellness. <laughs> exactly. Well, I've just danced like fun, fun, just dance your heart out kind of dance parties just to, to get people together of like mine that just want to feel good. When do you, I want to try it. When do you do I'm that? doing it this Friday in Santa Monica. I have a free class. Yeah. It's a social. And I do socials because I want people to meet each other and we build a community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. 
Well, yeah. I'm coming anyhow, so. And how old are the, what's the age range? I think so. We grew <laughs> every age. We have programs for little kids. We go into schools and we teach them these concepts. And it's based off these five truths. It's dance. It's a dance experience, but it's five truths. The one is no one cares what you look like. And if they do, it's their problem. And you're just going to have to deal with that your whole life. So just stop caring what anyone thinks. It's none of your business. Two, you are unique. You should absolutely look and move differently than anyone else. That's a truth. Um, that your way is the right way. However you choose to do it is the perfect right way. Own it. The fourth one is no one's going to do it for you. No one's going to get healthy for you. No one's going to get happy for you. No one's going to dance for you. You better learn to stand on your own two feet and take responsibility for yourself. And the fifth one is those four things are just good ideas until you apply it. And the Groove Dance Floor is a place for you to apply that in real time and start flexing that muscle of authenticity, creativity. So if you, when you're so deeply ingrained in a world like that you were in before, do you really ever, like, is there always a little thread that's still kind of hanging in there like, oh, I do need to sculpt my body or, oh, I do, or can you, is it possible to truly break free and not have any residual insecurities that stem from that world in the current world? That's an amazing question and you nailed it. I don't think as long as you live in this society and you live in this dimension of Hollywood and magazines and TV and social media and we all live in it, we're not free of it, you have to battle it every single day. Mm -hmm. And I realize that, that I have to battle it every single day. But what I've done, and this is what, how I help people, is developing practices that bring you back to the truth. So that every day I have to remind myself of the truth. It never goes away. It never goes away. Like, I'm just telling them that I, I can go to Mexico and I'm in blissed out land. I don't care. Everything's fine. It just doesn't matter. I let everything hang out. I come to LA and within three days I start feeling bad about myself again. I'm not enough. I don't have enough. I'm not pretty enough. My body's not perfect enough. And I start to feel that and I have to go, whoa, I need to go back to my practices. I need to spend that time every day to sit in silence and just breathe. It's also not easy to do that too. It's very, I've always told people, this is the hardest place to make it in the world. There's other regions and countries where you grow up and it's tough. But once you get here, like you're talking about, it, it is it's, tough. It, it doesn't matter who you are, you can be tough as nails. And I haven't yet seen anyone that's really free of it. Right. Truly it's free of it. very unforgiving. Really. It is, it very, and so you have to just tell yourself the truth. And you have to be a warrior for yourself and a warrior for your life and your happiness. And you'll never be happy if you don't feel like you're good enough or if you're pretty enough. Or yeah. You'll never truly experience happiness. And I know that we're here to be happy and we're here to enjoy this place. We're not here to obsess our face. And we're just not, that's not what we're here for. Like, I know that's what we're not here for, right? Like, you and your mission and what you're yes. doing. Like, you're here for something greater. And yes. it has nothing to do with, the, and you're beautiful in it. But it has nothing to do with being beautiful. It's about a purpose. But I, I think that when you, for me, when it feels like there, when, when you start turning the focus on you in a way that you know is unhealthy, um, to me, the best thing to do is to be of service because then that gets you out of it. So to have a day job where you're basically working with other people to save the planet, <laughs> which, is, which is an awesome responsibility and yes. talk about never feeling like you've done enough at the end or can of the day. Ever do yeah. So I'm, I'm always, out out of my head because I'm I'm in a, you know in the ocean's head in nature's head and in, in there trying to figure out how to work that um, and that that um, really makes you not think about what you're wearing what yeah. you're doing what you look like how much you weigh and and I find that uh, now that that has become part of my life and is now a lifestyle for me I often find that if my day is tough for whatever reason that has nothing to do with my job, um, just going to visit an animal shelter and bringing treats and like giving every dog behind those bars a little, little milk bone or something, that gets me out of my head. So if I'm at my lowest because something's going on personally, just a trip to the dog shelter and giving them stuff, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I'm I can totally that. okay after that. that. Because it's just about getting out of your head, just getting out of there and being of service. Being of service. Being of service, you know, volunteering at a shelter. Because what, how bad you think your life is, there's always people who have it worse. And we don't think that because we're so conditioned to focus on ourselves and that 
you know, look at me, poor me, I'm the victim, I'm, look at my life, look how bad it is, I've gained three pounds over the Christmas holidays, I'm and, I'm, and I'm no longer a zero, I'm a two, God forbid. <laughs> yeah. So just going up there and being of service is, like, to me, that's, that's the cure to getting out of your head. Oh, completely. And talking about being a service, talk about Sea Shepherd because that's a per per perfect segue into that, obviously. Yeah, you know, uh, Sea Shepherd has been um, a, an amazing uh, thing for me in my life. Uh, and and just, uh, it, I, I never knew that there was so much satisfaction that you can get from a job. Uh, to, to work at an organization whose motto is to defend, conserve, and protect the world's oceans is an is an honor and it's a it, and and it and it comes with a lot of responsibility so everything that we do is is for the greater good ultimately because if the oceans die we die we talked about shark finning earlier sharks are an apex predator if they're gone and they're at the top of the food chain everything else falls apart so that means then the oceans fall apart, which then means we as humans fall apart. And so the, the chain effect of everything that we do really comes down to, like, we're here to save everyone. So if you're gonna start fretting about what size you are or what clothes you're gonna wear, if the oceans die, we die, and you won't even be worried. There's about a that. much bigger problem going yeah, on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So we take care of the much bigger problem and we have some amazing partners, we have amazing donors uh, who have ships named after them like the Bob Barker, the John Paul de Joria, uh, and uh, the Bridget Bardot, uh, the Steve Irwin. Those people have donated a lot of money or their foundations have if, if in Steve Irwin's case and Sam Simon they passed away. And, um, and we depend on them and we depend on donors like every bit counts because we are an NGO and we are not funded by any government organization and we go where governments can't or won't or we partner with governments because they might not have all the resources or the staff to police an area that's essentially lawless. Yeah. And so we are like a private navy, Neptune's navy is what we call ourselves, and we go in there and we, we work with them and we work to end all the raping and pillaging that's happening in our oceans today. Amen. You know, the good thing Give about purpose. that also yeah. was uh, going to Santa Barbara Film Festival and seeing Chasing Thunder. Because you would always talk about, you know, volunteers and things like that, but I actually got a chance to see that movie and it's very, very good. Uh, I came up with a waiting system years ago called the four E's. You know, any good movie, TV show, CD, book, it's got to have the four E's. It's got to be entertaining, it's got to be engaging, exciting to watch, emotional and empathetic. And Chasing Thunder has all of that. I didn't even know it was there until you told me it was there. And it was honored to, you know, to see, <laughs> you know, Captain Paul Watson there because I didn't expect that to happen. Uh, but it was interesting. And, and, and the, the, the theater goers, the movie goers loved that. And it was good to see that. And that's the one good thing I liked about Santa Barbara Film Festival. The community comes out to see films. They really support that. And I like, and I like that. And they came out to see that film. It was really nice to see that. But it was really yeah. good to see the ships you were just talking about and the volunteers on that because I didn't, you don't see that. Yes, our ships are run by volunteers. We have, mm -hmm. uh, we have captains and engineers, but everyone else is there for no pay. They're volunteers and our captain always says, you know, you can't pay real people to do those jobs because they'll be like, mm, union says I need a break. But, you know, when you're there to save the oceans, you can't take a break. You know, when there are poachers in there, you can't be like, mm, I'll deal with them in an hour. I gotta take my Yeah, time. exactly. So the volunteers are there because they want to be there, because they care about the oceans, because they want to make a difference. So they have the drive. You know, it, you can always teach them little things here and there about boats and things like that, but you can't teach passion and drive. That has to be innate. So our, we love our volunteers because without them, there's no one on those ships doing the work. Website. Yeah. SeaShepherd.org, and you can click the donate button and you can donate in any capacity that you want, whether it's just $5 or do a recurring monthly donation or go to our e-store and buy a cool Sea Shepherd shirt, which funds our uh, organization. 
every bit counts. Or be a volunteer. You can be a volunteer on one of the ships, fill out a crew application, or uh, join the local chapter of Sea Shepherd. We have like so many chapters around the world. So wherever you live, there's like we have a Sea Shepherd Costa Rica. We have a Sea Shepherd Mexico. Oh, very so, cool. Yeah, you can get you can get involved. Misty website. Website. Um, there's a couple of them. The first one, if you want to experience this dance thing that I created in I the do. comfort of your own home, you can go to bodygroove.com slash misty. Or if you want to learn more about the movement that I am, I've created around the world, it's called the worldgroovemovement.com and that's where you can find local classes and so you can join a community um, in your local area and dance with really cool people. Are your five principles on written somewhere on the yeah, site? Yeah, on the World Group Movement. It's, like it's the core fundamental of what we, what we teach, especially the young kids. It's yeah. really awesome. All right. It is vioramed.com, V-I-O-R-A-M-E-D, and we have a physician's locator, so wherever you live, you can just click and see which doctor is closest to you. And the good thing about all this is, uh, to me, is that single male. <laughs> it shows just the empowerment of how strong you women are, and I like seeing it. I don't even want to say anything because it's good to see that they hear the voices of everybody coming out. I think that's great.